Hi folks, uh, welcome to the new video. A uh, little bit different today, I've had to move inside because the weather's not great, but shouldn't be a problem. Um, so today's video uh, is 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 going to detail how the ins and outs, the actual operation of a trickling out system, um, things like flow rates, why, why do it at all, um, stuff like that. And now I, I, I posted a video a couple of weeks ago about how to physically set up uh, and install a trickling out system on your pond. Um, and you can check that video out here, uh, or if you wait to the end, there's, there's um, links there, there's playlists uh, with, with all my help videos in. Um, and if, if this is the first of my videos you've seen, please do check out my channel, have a look at the videos, there's some, some stuff on there I'm sure you'll find useful. Um, but that, that, from that video I was asked a few questions, uh, and this video is now addressing, answering those questions. Um, so we'll crack on. A trickling out system, effectively, it's a means of changing water without actually having to worry about it. You can fit it and forget um, to some degree. So it's constantly dripping water in, trickling water in, and, and, and displacing water out to waste. So it's a constant water change rather than draining out a big volume of water topping it back up um, which which can change you know you can impact your pH you can affect your temperature you can forget to turn the holes off etc etc um, so a trickling out system is a nice neat way an easy low maintenance way to, to change water um, so why do we need to change water at all with a koi pond essentially as soon as you fill that from the tap from mains water you fill that pond from that moment, the water is deteriorating. Uh, there's no, there's no getting around it. Water has chlorine, chloramines in it. Um, basically, they're put in by your water company to keep the water sterile as it's transported to your home. So it arrives at your home fit for human consumption. Um, once the water comes out of the pipework, out of the tap, into a bowl, a, a pond, whatever it may be, chlorine gas is off in a couple of hours um, and, it, and it's gone and from that point when the chlorine's gassed off the water deteriorates um, so how, why does it deteriorate if there's fish in there they release pheromones inorganic proteins etc that build up over time um, suppressing other fish's appetites um, impacting on growth actually causing stress to your fish so we need to water those down um, from from the uh, nitrogen cycle, uh, you, 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 an end product essentially of that process is, is nitrate, phosphates. Um, while they need to be very high levels to be toxic to your fish, it is possible but they do need to be high levels. Um, they're not essentially a problem in that respect, but they are a problem in that they're, they're a food source for algae, uh, single cell algae which causes green water blanket weed, etc, etc. So again, we need to water those down um, to keep the water fresh. Essentially, what you've got is a, a, an enclosed ecosystem there where um, those things can get out without us taking them out. Um, and, and water changes effectively are about dilution. And um, last thing, is trace minerals again essential for your koi's health and well-being trace minerals they're in the tap water um, mains water they are consumed effectively by your koi over time uh, pretty quickly so if you don't add fresh water regularly to top up those trace minerals then then you become your system becomes deficient to those minerals and you you know your koi are impacted as a result so lots and lots of reasons why we need to change water. Okay, we've established we need to change water, uh, but how, how is best to go about it? Effectively two methods. One is to pump some water out to waste, maybe opening a waste valve, maybe running a pump, whatever it may be, uh, and then simply topping it back up with fresh water. Um, a little bit onerous as a process, takes a bit of time, relies on you remembering to turn the hose off, add dechlorinate, etc, uh, etc. Et um, and, and the other method is the trickle in, trickle out method. So essentially what you've got here is you have an overflow set such that your pond water height reaches a level. If it, if it goes beyond that level, the water flows out into waste. 
and so as such you can keep a constant small trickle of water going in fresh water um, tiny tiny amounts of chlorine which are gassed off before they become build up to any level at all so you don't need to worry about dechlorinating uh, at, at small trickles um, and your, your older water is, is trickling out to waste and thus continually diluting benefits as i say you don't you can't forget to turn the hose off you can't forget to put the chlorinator in um, don't get massive temperature swings uh, if you're putting cold water in in the summer you know doing a big water change you, you can you can drop the temperature significantly of the pond ph uh, swings etc etc so it's just a much more controlled and balanced way of doing it of doing the water changes um, so yeah if at all possible i would recommend a, a trickle in trickle out okay we, we've established we need we, we're going to do a, a trickle in trickle out the next thing the next question the biggie is how much do we want to want to put in now for this you'll you'll read various various options between generally between 10 and 20 percent of your pond volume change that per week so every week you remove between 10 and 20 percent of your water now I always go for 20 percent I would recommend you shoot for 20 percent okay so how do you work out how much water to trickle in um, so essentially you need to know the volume of your pond uh, so on mine it's it's about a thousand gallons so I believe about four and a half thousand liters you need to work out 20 percent of that so 20 percent of four and a half thousand liters is 900 liters so I want to trickle in 900 litres fresh water every week. So to work that out, to break that down further, 168 hours in a week. So if I divide 900 by 168 hours um, in lit, this is all in litres now, I'll get around about a little over five litres per hour. So that is the trickle that I want to set up. So obviously it'll be different for your pond, but it's, it's straightforward to work out. Uh, how to measure that in, in my system. Again, if you look, if you look on my um, trickle in trickle out video, I have a little, I have a diverter and a valve. Um, so I can divert my trickle in away from my pond to a valve. Uh, and I can put a jug under that, divert the flow into the jug um, and just measure for, for example for a minute um, turn it off measure exactly how many liters milliliters whatever it may be of water you've got in one minute multiply it by 60 to give you the, the flow per hour now you need to be quite accurate with those measurements because um, doing it that way a small error in in the measurement will will have a significant impact so you need to be accurate with that um, but essentially that's all you need to do and just tweak tweak it uh, tweet your trickle in until you've got the right flow that we calculated a little earlier. Uh, now another question I was asked was do we need to turn off the trickle in trickle out during treatments for example treating for parasites um, and the answer basically is yes you need to you need to turn it off um, but as always it's a little more complicated in that each treatment each chemical treatment that you put in will have a different active period so it'll be active in your pond killing parasites for a, a specific length of time um, and each one is different so you need to you need to know from the manufacturer and the instructions are on all the, on, on, on the bottles and things um, you need to know how long that chemical is active for uh, and that's the period you need to turn your trickle in trickle out off just so that you're not diluting it you've got the maximum concentration for the correct period of time um, and to give you a few examples, I'm looking down at my sheet here, to be honest, because I can't remember them all. But chloramine T, for example, is active for four hours. Um, uh, PP up to six hours, although I've not, I don't think I've ever seen it active for that length of time, to be honest. The, the, you know, in, it's in the colour change. The colour of PP is indicative of, of its state. And anyway, up to six hours. Um, <clears throat> work on aquatic four to five days. Uh, so you know, much longer period without the trickle in, trickle out. Um, formalin and malachite, three to four days. So they, they all vary. You, you need to know the length of time that the chemical is active. Turn off your, your trickle in, trickle out for that period. And then 
once the chemical is spent and it's no longer active you would do 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 a 20 percent water change anyway um you know so essentially you're not losing anything you you know you get you you're catching up so no problem um i think that's it i've answered the questions i was asked uh there. i think that's everything if there's anything i've missed as always please put a put a comment or uh, even if you want to just tell me how crap good whatever stick a comment give us a like whatever um please if you haven't already do subscribe to the channel um have a look at the other videos uh, i'm sure there'll be something of interest to you there um and i'll see you in the next video thank you very much